Thomas Schwartz, President of Purchase College, State University of New York. Thank you. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 45th Annual Commencement Exercises. Joining me on the dais are dignitaries, friends of the college, members of our various foundation boards, our deans, directors, chairs, our faculty, our officers, and members of our college council. Chairman McCall has had a distinguished career as a public servant. He served three times as a New York State Senator, representing the Upper Manhattan District of New York City, as an ambassador to the United Nations, as a commissioner of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, and as commissioner of the New York State Division of Human Rights. Chairman McCall served as controller of the state of New York from May 1993 to December 2002. He has been a passionate advocate for public education. He served as president of the New York City Board of Education, where he set policy for the largest school system in the nation, and as the chairman of the Public Higher Education Conference Board, a coalition of 14 member organizations which supports a strong and vibrant public higher education system in New York State. He is the recipient of nine honorary degrees. Please welcome Chairman McCall. Thank you very much, <coughs> President Swartz, for that very gracious introduction. But most of all, thank you for your leadership, your purchase. You have done a wonderful job in advancing a great institution, one of the great gems of the SUNY system. Good afternoon, and welcome to this great celebration. I'm so honored to be here at Purchase today, among all the proud friends and family who are witnessing this important ceremony. As you officially become college graduates, I know I join President Swartz and all the faculty and staff who have guided you to this moment in saying we could not be prouder of your accomplishments. I'm also thrilled to be present. Yep, you've become, you deserve it. Go ahead and clap for yourself. I'm also thrilled to be present as SUNY Purchase confers honorary doctorates to Mayor David M. Dinkins, Barbara Lee Diamondstein Spielbogle, and Holland Connor. Each of these individuals has offered tremendous service to both New York State and America as a whole. I cannot think of many people more deserving of this honor than they are. As chairman of the SUNY Board of Trustees, I stand here along with my fellow trustee, Carl Spielvogel. We want to be one of the first to congratulate you as you embark on the next step in your journey. It may be for an advanced degree. It may be a job working in the industry you study during your time here at Purchase, and it may be something else altogether. That is the incredible thing about walking out of the door today with a SUNY degree. The world just opened up and the possibilities for you are endless. You are joining a network of three million SUNY alums around the world that are CEOs, actors and musicians, government officials, doctors, lawyers, scientists. This is a powerful group that affects change in so many ways. And you are now part of that group. We can't wait to see what you will do. The fact is, why that fact is why we do what we can as a board of trustees. Always in the forefront of our minds is the fact that the decisions we make have a direct impact on the students and we are careful students, stewards of that responsibility. You see, I know firsthand the benefit of higher education and the transformational effect it could have on a student's life. My own story begins because I was able to enter college and obtain several degrees. I've had experience working around the world, 
pursuing a career in public service to the highest levels of government, and all because I have a college degree. You will have that degree, and you must do big and good things with it. I look around this room, and I can't even imagine who you will be in 10 years. But one thing is for sure, you have the best possible beginning you could have. Take that SUNY diploma and go and do great things. Keep in touch. We want you to inspire those students that come after you, and we know you will. To the class of 2017, congratulations again, and best wishes for a successful future. You are best known as the 106th Mayor of New York City, a post that you held from 1990 to 1993. You are the first and only African American to hold this office. Your accomplishments during those four years are noteworthy and significant. However, this is only a portion of the commitment that you have made to New York City and to New York State. After completing law school in 1956, you quickly turned from a law practice to politics and ran for the New York State Assembly in 1965, representing Harlem. You are a founding member of the Black and Puerto Rican Legislative Caucus of New York State. the Council of Black Elected Democrats of New York State, and 100 black men. You moved from state to city politics and became city clerk in 1975 and in 1985 Manhattan Borough President. Your commitment to changing the lives of minorities and underserved communities is evident in your work to increase housing for the homeless and mentally ill to address the city's crack cocaine and AIDS crises, and to rebuild communities in Harlem, the South Bronx, and Brooklyn. As mayor, as mayor, you also served as the vice president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. In 1994, you joined the faculty of Columbia University, where you continue to serve as professor in the practice of public policy at the School of International and Public Affairs. You have been a loyal supporter of Purchase College and its students. I want to also say, as a lifelong resident of New York City, from my point of view, you were the manifestation of what a mayor of New York City should do and who we should represent. In recognition of your outstanding contributions to government, your service to the citizens of New York City and state, your commitment to education, and for the leadership you have shown in advancing the rights of minorities and the underserved, the State University of New York, through Purchase College, bestows upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws. David Norman Dinkins, by virtue of the authority vested in me, the faculty of the State University of New York concurring, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, and I invest you with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereunto. In token thereof, I present you with this diploma and direct that you be vested with the hood appropriate to your degree.
because we are, or I am, in New York City, and I often am in the company of African American diplomats, and South Africans particularly have a custom. Uh, instead of acknowledging by name all of you important people here on the platform and out there, they simply say, usual protocols observed. <laughs> so that means that Regina Spector and Cody Levada and Dominic Carter and Kevin Collimore and Senator Chuck Schumer, I don't know whether Chuck has arrived yet or not, but I know he's expected. Oh, there he is. Ah, well, I'm, I'm all right then. <laughs> and of course, uh, Carl McCall, what you may not know is that his bride, uh, Joyce Brown, Dr. Joyce Brown, who heads the uh, Fashion Institute, she was one of my deputy mayors. Hmm. And so a whole lot of the good that we got done was because of Joyce Brown. Hmm. That Purchase College would choose to confer upon me this honorary degree is a great honor. And I'm proud that you view my efforts in public service as worthy of recognition. I am, of course, grateful to have been given the opportunity to serve as the 106th mayor of the greatest city in the world. Those of you who come from other cities, not understand. <laughs> there are many architects of the gorgeous mosaic, that's what I call the city of New York, some of whom are here today and others are represented by two who have contributed to our tapestry. New England-born Alan Cotter. Applause, please. <laughs> He's here to receive an honorary degree. My congratulations to you, sir. And then there's my dear friend, Barbara Lee Diamondstein Spielvogel, who's an exemplary native New Yorker, someone who contributes passionately to her city as a historian, an author, a lifelong advocate for the arts, landmarks, and communities. I could go on about what a tremendous person of character she is, but for the sake of time, I ask that you trust me when I say that this institution could not have chosen a better honoree than this woman right here. And I'm pleased to stand before you now to congratulate Mrs. Barbara Lee Timonstein Spielvogel, one of the true treasures of New York. <laughs> Permit me to speak directly for a moment was the class of 2017 about the will and the investment that you must be prepared to make in those who are less fortunate than you and who have not had the opportunities that you have had. And believe me, there are many who have had even fewer opportunities than you, such as you are here today with us wearing a cap and gown. I have witnessed many things in my life of public service and have encountered many thousands of good and caring people but I've observed that even good and caring people can sometimes overlook the struggles of those less fortunate than themselves. I want to share my concerns about such things as you prepare to move on in your lives and inevitably become an influence in the lives of others. Over five decades ago, amid times as difficult as these, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. dedicated his life to raising his voice, to turn the tides toward justice as he shared his dream of a better life. He gave us the gift of determination and most of all his hope for the future. He was able to articulate a vision so powerful and so compelling that it helped lift our country from the strife of his times. As I look around here today, I can see that time has not eroded Dr. King's dream. But it is in jeopardy. We know that as long as the doors of opportunity remain closed to so many, the dream that Dr. King dared dream will not be fulfilled. We will have to repent in this generation, he wrote, not merely for the vitriolic words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. Please do not number yourselves among the silent good people. You've had the advantage of guidance of mentors here at SUNY Purchase, 
and you must remind yourself of the importance of passing such guidance on to others. You can do no less. You are the source of our nation's moral wealth, and we are invested in you. Ours is an investment that has great value. It comes to you from over the generations and is not to be misspent. We must not misspend your moral capital by measuring success in terms of personal gain at the expense of the common good. You must not misspend the investment in you by disregarding the misery of others. You must not misspend your educational advantage by turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to the suffering that comes inevitably from the abuse of power and reckless disregard for the rights of others. You must not misspend the faith and trust of family and friends by following the example of those who would sacrifice future generations to satisfy their need for immediate gain and the power to sustain it. It is said that the true measure of any society is the manner in which it treats the least of us. That means that we must show the responsibility for every human being, including the poorest, the neediest, the most vulnerable. Without such a compact, there is no just society. And as future leaders, you share a special duty to fulfill this obligation. It will soon be your responsibility to guarantee that every member of our community enjoys equal rights and equal opportunities. That is the spirit with which this country was founded. That is the cornerstone of our Constitution. I'm not asking that you take up a lifetime of public service, but I do ask each of you personally to give back some measure of that which you have received. Whether you opt for a career helping others or give some of your time to a worthy organization, however you choose to make this gift of yourself, it will make a difference. It will matter, and as future leader, you can do no less. I hope that all of our collective contributions might inspire the conviction, the will, and the wherewithal to serve in all of you. Let me close now with a selection I found inspiring. A passage from John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress that may help to guide your actions as you leave this place and steer your course through the inevitable challenges you will face. It's a parable Bunyan called the Bridge Builder. It goes like this. An old man going a lone highway came in the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast both deep and wide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim the swollen stream was as naught to him, but he stopped when safe on the farther side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength and labor here. Your journey will end with the closing day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build you this bridge at even tide? The laborer lifted his old gray head good friend in the path I have come, he said, there followeth after me today a youth whose feet must pass his way. This chasm which has been naught to me, to that young man may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. I thank the leadership of SUNY Purchase, President Schwartz, his trustees, and members of the faculty for this honor, and thank you for listening and for the high honor you've given me today. Congratulations. God bless you. Keep the faith. It's an honor to be here today to address the members of the platform, friends and families of the graduates, but most of all, you, the graduates of SUNY Purchase 2017. Congratulations. class gift. As you know, it's hard to pay for college. If you're poor, the federal government helps you out. That's a good thing. But what about the middle class? So I wrote a law a few years ago. It's a permanent law now on the books that says you or your parents, whoever paid for college, can take as a full tax credit $2,500 off your federal taxes for every year of college and graduate school, provided, there's always a provided in Washington, provided your family income is below $200,000 a year. So, so if you come from a family that makes below $200,000, maybe
picture you or mom or dad, whoever paid for college, takes that credit. Last year, about a quarter of all the people who are entitled to it didn't take it because it's relatively new. And if you forgot the last few years, you can file a very simple form with the IRS and actually get a $7,500 check in the mail. Not a bad class gift. Now, graduates, what happens if you come from a family that makes above $200,000 a year? God bless you. <laughs> Word to the moms and dads. I know how you feel, because a few short years ago, my wife Iris and I sat where you did, watched our daughter Jessica come up on the platform, get a diploma. It was one of the greatest days of our life. And so, I say to you, job well done, congratulations as well. It's a great day for you. And one more word of thanks. As we're sitting here today, there are young men and women, many from New York State, who are in our armed forces, often overseas, in dangerous places like Iraq and Afghanistan, risking their lives for us. Let's have a round of applause. You're graduating at a time we know of enormous, enormous change in our country and around the world. It's an era of profound economic change. It's an era of profound social change. The world is moving so, so fast. In the old days, you graduated from college and the odds were pretty high that you'd have the same job or work in the same field for the next 40 years. That's not so true anymore. Many of you will have several jobs, several careers. Along with these economic changes, the internet has put so much information at your fingertips, it's sometimes hard to figure out what's important and to distinguish between what's true and what isn't. And even around the world there are so many changes. A generation ago we never heard of terrorism and suicide bombing. But the good news is this. Your generation is perhaps better equipped than any generation that's come before it to adapt to these changes to overcome obstacles that they present, and to seize the opportunities they afford, to pursue your passions and maybe even accomplish big things. Right now though, sitting in your seats, you may not be exactly sure what's going to come next. With so much of the world changing, it may sometimes understandably feel like you're jumping into an abyss. But the key is not to fear the unknown. Embrace it. Relish it. Soak up every possibility it has to offer. How do I know? Because I remember I had these feelings myself when I was younger. When I was seated at college graduation, as many of you are today, I had learned that I had just won a scholarship to travel all around the world. All expenses paid for a whole year. For me, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. I had never been out of the country before. But at the same time, I had met a girl, and I fell in love. Aww. <laughs> so graduates, I had to decide. Do I go around the world for a whole year on the all-expense-paid scholarship? Yeah. Or do I stay home with the girl, my first true love? <laughs> Class of 2017, what would you have done? Mr. President, the class is divided. I stayed home with the girl. Okay, you romantics over there in the third row, don't clap yet, the story unfolds. That summer, she went on a brief vacation, and I went to the airport to meet her on her return. As soon as she got off the plane, I saw by the look on her face, something was the matter. She dumped me by Labor Day. There I was, no scholarship, no trip around the world, no girl. I said to myself, what a loser you are. You're never going to make anything of yourself. Hang it up. And in fact, I stayed in my house for several months, moped around, felt sorry for myself. But somehow I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and moved forward. A few years later, I found myself seated once again at graduation, this time from law school. But on the way home from graduation, I told mom and dad I was not going to join the fancy law firm like we had planned. 
I told them I loved politics. I told them my dream was to run for public office. My parents were shocked. My mother was particularly disappointed. You see, I came from a working class family. My dad was an exterminator, never went to college. And this law firm was paying $400 a week, which in those days was more money than my family had ever seen. But they wanted the best for me, but my heart, my dream was to run for office. And so that fall, at the age of 23, and against very long odds, I ran for the New York State Assembly, and I had three opponents. There was the party machine candidate, there was a neighborhood activist, and then there was my mother who was telling all her friends not to vote for me. <laughs> so she said, I get this dumb idea of being a politician out of my big, thick head. Well, graduates, a few years earlier, I didn't get that girl. But that November, I won the election. So, graduates on this day, on this great day of your achievement and happiness, my advice to you is take the risk. Don't let the fear of failure deter you, even though the world is so different and changing. For those of us who have gotten older and look back on life, one of the things we most regret, I'm sure it's true of almost everyone my age around here, is the what ifs. What if I had done this? What if I hadn't done that? My advice to the class of 2017 is very simple. Go for it. Now you're about to cast off into the unknown. It can sometimes seem very scary, but you've got great assets a great education here from SUNY Purchase. Families, parents, will have your back and back you up through thick and thin. So, garner up the courage and strength to put your doubts aside, take a chance, and if you do, it's my hope, it's my prayer, and indeed it's my confidence you will find true success and true joy. So to this great class of 2017, congratulations. Good luck. Godspeed, and don't you forget, go for it. Cameron Reese. Sarah B. Rosenberg. Carlton Lewis Sargent. Megan Elizabeth Joy Siebel. Samantha Short. Justin W. Tolbert. Amanda Valtrin. Mr. President, you have here assembled before you the Purchase College degree candidates for 2017. On behalf of the administration, faculty, staff of the college, I ask at this time that you confer upon them their degrees. Yes. Are we ready? Yeah. You don't want any more speeches? Okay. Upon the authority vested in me by the Chancellor and the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York, I hereby confer upon you the degrees which you have earned and to which you are entitled. Congratulations.